Hey, Deserving Listeners, a lot of you have been asking me to watch this new documentary on Britney Spears and react to it, so let's get to it. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda, and I'm a therapist and a professor, and I'm going to watch this documentary and see if anything of interest comes out of my face. Hey, I shaved my hair off, too, because I didn't want nobody touching me, mm-hmm. and they still didn't get it. Britney is in the midst of a legal battle right now. She's been in a conservatorship for the past 12 years. Free Britney! All right, so that's interesting. I've heard people talking about Free Britney, and I don't think I ever knew what it meant, but we're hearing here that Britney Spears has been under conservatorship for the past 12 years. Usually it's because the law has determined that someone is incompetent to take care of their own affairs. If someone had dementia, for example, we might want to help them out by taking control of their finances and paying their bills because if we didn't do that, then the person wouldn't pay their bills and then they'd be evicted and they'd be on the street and there'd be all sorts of bad things. And so conservatorship gives someone else the ability, usually a family member, the ability to take care of someone. And what I'm guessing is, is that Brittany was deemed incompetent because of her mental illness, which I find to be interesting because the little bit that I know about Brittany was that there were times, maybe most of the time, where she is competent, where she's able to take care of herself. The other possibility is that Brittany actually, uh, well, I was going to say the other possibility is that Brittany wants to be taken care of in this official way, but they just said that Brittany's fighting it. Okay, so that's interesting. So maybe I'm guessing we're going to get data on that which will be interesting to learn about. Her dad has been in charge of her money for the last 12 years. And a few months ago, Brittany's lawyer said, Brittany wants someone else to be in charge of her money and wants Jamie, her father, to step down. Brittany's father so far has refused to step down. Okay, so presumably there's a lot of money at stake here. So there's a matter of motive when it comes to a fight like this. Is the father truly interested in helping Brittany? Or is he in it to gain money for selfish reasons? Like I said, most conservative conservatorships involve people that don't literally have millions and millions of dollars. And that raises a question, which I'm guessing we'll get some answers. To understand where Brittany is now, we should understand how she got here. Yay! For those of you who watch my channel know that I always appreciate getting the background and the childhood of the people that we're talking about. It gives us a lot of insight into maybe where they're coming from. So let's watch. I noticed last week you had the most adorable, pretty eyes. Do you have a boyfriend? No, sir. Why not? They're mean. <laughs> Boyfriends? You mean all boys are mean? I'm not mean. How about me? Well, it depends. <laughs> So I'm old. I remember so many jokes like this on television. And I remember Ed McMahon making jokes like this. It was so normal back then. And through today's more enlightened, more intelligent, more wise eyes, this definitely is not okay. Why would you ask her, one, if she has a boyfriend, she's 10? Two, why would you offer yourself up as a 65-year-old creepy man? It's based on a whole set of assumptions about gender and sexuality and power that wonderfully we are moving on from. And it just makes you wonder in another 30 years what kinds of things are happening today that we will also look back on and cringe. When I watch this, that's my reaction is I'm glad that we have graduated from this, but boy, were we in a bad place before and what are we in a bad place right now? And we came up with a plan, Lynn and Brittany would come to New York for a period of time. So this raises all those questions that I've been mulling over as I watch reality TV with children on it. Can children truly consent to being an entertainer on this level? Can they really know what they're signing up for when they're signing on the dotted line that says, yes, I want this career? I'm guessing a lot of kids and adults said when they look back on their childhood performance career, don't regret what they went through, but certainly we know that a lot do. And are there proper protections? My layperson take on the laws state by state in the United States is that there aren't enough protections for children in situations like this. Oh, y'all 
like so pretty. This is my mom right here. And this is my brother's girlfriend. This is my little sister. Jamie, Brittany's father, wasn't around very much when Brittany was growing up. We know that Jamie was struggling with alcohol and he later goes to rehab. He drifts in between construction, being a cook, tries to open a gym business that didn't work out. All right. So we've learned a detail that the father struggled from alcoholism, according to this documentary by the New York Times, and that he worked a lot. So that could indicate some pretty awful things, abusive, angry things. It could also indicate just distance. And we'll hear maybe some detail about how it affected Brittany. Lynn supported Brittany. I want to say Lynn because I never talked to her father. The only thing Jamie ever said to me was, my daughter's going to be so rich, she's going to buy me a boat. All right, so we're getting a little bit more detail from someone that worked with Britney Spears that is basically saying that the father wasn't very close and wasn't very interested in Britney's life and on one occasion mentioned that he was excited because he'd be able to buy a boat. How you want it to be. The video shows up. Quite famously, she is in a schoolgirl's uniform. She owns the hallways at this school. And the song is, is obviously sexual in nature. So in 1998, when Britney hit the scene, I was a very young therapist. I had just graduated the year before with my master's degree, before I got my doctorate later. And I was a therapist working with adults, and I was working with couples, and I was working with teenagers and children and families. And of course, a lot of the teenagers were very much into Britney Spears, and I was actually doing a lot of in-home therapy at that point. And so I would see the family homes, and I would see the bedroom posters with Britney, or I'd hear them listening to Britney Spears, and it was really quite a thing. And of course, I remember as a young person hearing all the older people than me complaining about how sexual she was and all of the talk. And I just remember thinking, have we not learned from the past? <laughs> Because when I was a kid, it was Madonna, and everyone was freaking out about Madonna and, and you know, clutching their pearls and wringing their hands. And it's like, calm down. It's just art. It's always, you know, people freaked out about Elvis moving his hips. Have we not learned from the past? I always just hope that parents will someday learn, like, remember when I was a teenager and everyone was just flipping out about this particular artist? Well, as a parent, when I grow older, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. But they always do. And I get it. There's worry that you have for your kids, and you should be worried. You should be concerned for your kids. But a music video doesn't usually ruin children's lives. See, that brings up the age-old question for guys. Who do you watch? The nice girl? The pretty girl you can take home to mom? Or the cheap, slender girl you know puts out? Everybody goes for Monica! An exponent of that interest in that relationship bled over into our interest in Britney Spears in some way. Yeah, the Monica Lewinsky story is filled with sexism and slut shaming. Just awful. Again, when we look at the jokes and all of the rhetoric, uh, at least through people that know better today, which a lot of people do, particularly younger people, they can see it for what it is. But at the time, no one said anything. No one, very few people saw it as problematic. It was just taken for granted that, well, Monica Lewinsky had sex with the president. It's not the president's fault. It's this, this, you know, slutty girl's fault. It's all her fault. And she's gross and disgusting and all these kinds of things. Not him. It's not, it's not a, the president of the most powerful country in the world. It's not his fault. He's much older and obviously massively in power and her employer, by the way, she was an intern at the White House. Now, of course, Bill Clinton got fried in a lot of ways for that, but a lot of the jokes were about, about Monica Lewinsky. I guess one of the things that I think we can learn is we're still in the midst of sexism and slut shaming today for sure, but it's pretty clear we've come at least some ways down the road because the kinds of jokes that we're seeing Jay Leno and other pe people say I don't think those would actually be aired on, say, Colbert or Jimmy Fallon. I don't think he would be saying those kinds of jokes today, or at least I don't think so. So uh, we'll say that's progress. We have a long way to go, of course. I think a lot of people were, like, uncomfortable with 
you know, her sexuality. A lot of talk about your sexy Lolita look, especially after the Rolling Stones uh, story. Well, I think we're all girls, and I mean, that's a part of who we are. You would be lying if you said you didn't like to feel sexy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You're a girl. Now, it does raise a question. She's still a minor at this point. So what do we think about that? Is this condoning the sexualization of teenagers before they should be sexualized? Is it condoning abuse of teenagers, saying that uh, they can be, you know, they're asking to be objectified or they're, they're fair game to be objectified and controlled sexually or looked at through a heterosexual male gaze as a sexual object, and that's their only value? That's what often is happening in a lot of contexts like this. I'm not saying Brittany was doing this consciously or unconsciously. I'm just saying that when people would look at Brittany, instead of seeing her as a performer and as a powerful pop artist, it was how does she come across as a sexual object to men and not for her intelligence or her agency or maybe the messages that she was trying to say. I don't know. That does raise some questions as to the ethics of a family that allows this to happen and of an industry and a society that condones it. One's talking about it. Why? Well, your breasts. (laughs) My breasts. You seem to get furious when a talk show host comes up with this (laughs) subject. My, I mean, is she still a minor? It doesn't matter if she's a minor, but if she is a minor, then my goodness. But, so, so, let's just break that down. Now, I don't know the context of that dude's question, but he's like, uh, you know, well, let's rewind that because I want to get the wording correct. Everyone's talking about it. Why? Well, your breasts. (laughs) My breasts. You seem to get furious when a talk show host comes up with this. (laughs) Everyone's talking about it. She's like, what? He says, your breasts. She's like, and you hear the reaction from the crowd, oh. And then he's, you seem to get furious when people ask you about your breasts. So one, why are you bringing that up? What is wrong with you? Two, you're flabbergasted that she gets upset when people ask her about her breasts. What if Britney Spears sat down and asked him about his genitalia? Just casually, like, let's talk about your genitalia. Um, Oh, you're upset. Well, it's kind of strange. You're getting upset when I ask you about your genitalia. (laughs) Yeah, this is a double standard in our society. It is, we're getting better, at least in my neck of the woods, but we have a long way to go. This doesn't surprise me at all. This is just one example of what Brittany had to go through and what women have to go through in entertainment and women have to go through all the time. You know, it's interesting because I was too old to really pay attention to Britney Spears. But this is interesting to see. I, you know, I saw a similar thing with the Paris Hilton. She got different kinds of attention, but a similar, I didn't pay attention to Paris, Paris Hilton either when she was uh, famous because just not my cup of tea back then. But seeing the, the footage, you just really see in stark contrast how horrible people are treated, particularly women in entertainment, particularly young women in entertainment. I don't know. Subject. I'll say this. You know, I worked with all the boy bands, all of them. Not one of the boys was ever under any scrutiny. It certainly is a paradox, isn't it? The the way she works and And the way she dresses. She doesn't seem that innocent. Right. So that was all the talk that we heard where it was She's trying to come across like she's innocent, like she's a teenager. And we, were, we saw this with Christina as well. It's like, oh, she's trying to be innocent, but then she's also being very sexual. And, and this, this blaming, it was always this rhetoric of she's, she, there's something wrong with Brittany because she is asserting her sexuality. Now, again, if she's a child at this point, then we do have to wonder about everyone. You know, it's not unusual for a teenage girl to want to dress in a certain way or to want to express themselves in a certain way. But it's another thing when we have a whole industry and a society and a family that profits off of that effort that the child is wanting to express. There's a big difference between that. If a 16-year-old says, you know, I want to wear a bikini and go to the beach 
And that's what I want to do because that's the sort of person I am and that's how I want to express myself and that's how I like to dress. Then a lot of us, depending on your family values, would, okay, that's fine. But for everyone to participate in and then to evaluate it with such scrutiny and to blame her for it of just like she's up to no good. And there's just there's that attitude, right, of that because she's asserting her sexuality, trying to ex- you know express herself that way, there's something – what evil about her there's something immoral about her there's something wrong with her and we have a lot of values in our society around gender and this sort of thing if justin timberlake at this age had shown up without a shirt on and he was you know uh, like when i was growing up as a teenager it was marky mark <laughs> and the funky bunch he marky mark had these very famous i think calvin klein um uh, ads with underwear I don't remember anyone slut shame, shaming him, or I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't remember anyone clutching their pearls when he was show, when he was literally doing these famous ads with him just in underwear. I, at least I don't remember it, and so it's this concern. Now I'm not saying because there is again, she's a child at this point. At least I think she is. We do have the right as a parent about our children and concern about. I hope that they don't get exploited. I hope that they don't get harmed. I hope that they aren't attracting an element of a predator to harm them. That is normal, and that's good that we would worry about our children. So I, I think there's a lot going on here when, when we're watching this. Britney Spears has upset a lot of mothers in this country, starting with the wife of the governor of Maryland. Really, if I had an opportunity to to shoot Britney Spears, I think I would. Because of the example for kids and how hard it is to be a parent. Yeah, I mean, okay, it is hard to be a parent. Blaming Britney Spears for the difficulties that you go through as a parent doesn't make any sense. And this sort of stuff happens in every generation. And every time it happens, 20 years later, we look back and think it's so quaint. But I'm, I don't know what lightning rod is happening today. Britney Spears was a lightning rod in 1999. I wonder who their lightning rod is today. I don't know. But, you know, there's someone. And we just have to be smarter than that. We just have to say, yeah, parenting is hard. And if there's something we want to blame and attack, it's sexism, misogyny, racism as a whole. There are individuals who will exhibit those kinds of attitudes. But really, we have a society that over-sexualizes children and over-sexualizes teenagers. And we need to attack that at all levels. Attacking one artist as if that's going to solve the problem doesn't make any sense. Plus, when you're an artist, you have the freedom to express yourself within the law as you want to. Are you responsible for that? For sure. But, you know, dressing up in certain kinds of clothing and, and and singing songs with certain innuendos. I mean, you know, pop artists have been doing that for decades. And it's sad for me to think that Britney had to endure just constant questions. Help her handle it. It's had a year that would test a lot of people. It was pretty rough. Yeah. Um, oh my goodness. Hello. Ew, strong Britney. Um, yeah, it was a weird. So as my YouTube channel has gained notoriety over the past 13 years, I started to see the effects of being just a tiny, tiny little bit famous. And when you get that sort of notoriety, there are a lot of good things, but a lot of bad things. You become the target of a lot of hate and a lot of trolls and a lot of people who they just want to hurt somebody. And I deal with this every day. And I've been dealing with this for years. So if I have to deal with that, and it, and it really gets to me, it gets to me to the point where there have been times, you know, briefly where I've thought about just throwing the whole thing in and saying, I don't want to do this anymore. I cannot imagine what someone of Britney's level of fame has to go through on a constant basis. The amount of, of good things you get, obviously there's a lot of fan mail. The thing I like to say as a way of explaining this is that Let's say that one in a thousand of the people that follow you want to hurt you. One in a thousand individuals that follow your career, they hate you. 
they want to hurt you and they will do things to take you down with the purpose of trying to make you suffer. Maybe they're going through a bad time in their life. Maybe they're literally a psychopath. There's a fair amount of people in the world, a small percentage, but a you know, sizable uh, minority of people, one to 2% of the population, who don't have any empathy and even might take pleasure in harming other people. So let's say one in a thousand of your fans want to hurt you and will do things to hurt you. Well, if you have a million fans, you now have a thousand people who want to hurt you. That's a thousand people every day who are determined to ruin your life. Now, it's only one in 1,000 of the people that know you who want to hurt you. That's a pretty low percentage. But again, if you have a million fans and if you have 100 million fans or a billion fans, then we're talking about thousands of people who on a daily basis are trying to hurt you, are trying to tear you down, are, they enjoy thinking about you suffer, and they will do a lot in their power, within their power, to scare you and to tear you down. It, and I've experienced a little bit of that. If I have, say, 2,000 fans, then I have two people on a daily basis who are trying to ruin my life. It actually isn't that bad, but you get the picture. So imagine what Brittany was going through. Me becoming, again, t a t having a tiny bit of notoriety makes me realize how hard it is for them. And for them to come out and say things like, uh, you know, the paparazzi are attacking me, or a lot of times then that causes people to want to attack you more. They'll say like, well, you're famous, you deserve it. Uh, you know, if you don't want it, then you shouldn't be famous because people are jealous or they don't understand or I don't know what's going on. But just because someone get, has some notoriety and some fame doesn't mean they deserve to be attacked and humiliated and made to feel afraid. So I, I think what the documentary is trying to show us now is the mounting emotional uh, toll that Brittany was going through, not only from being a famous person, but incurring a lot of sexism and misogyny and slut shaming and blame. So I'm guessing that's what they're building up to. All right, well, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. Tune in next time when we continue watching the documentary. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.